Good afternoon, everyone. I am very excited to talk to you today about drug development and artificial intelligence applications. So I'm the specialty pharma analyst for Bloomberg Intelligence. So looking at clinical trials and designs is my day in and day out, and there are plenty of applications for AI, as we'll discuss. So revenue in the AI health market is expected to reach $6.6 .6 billion by 2021. That's a 40% annual growth rate. And in just the next five years, the AI market is going to grow more than 10 times within health. There's plenty of room for growth within drug development. As we'll see, drug development is really made for AI applications. We have massive amounts of data, and right now in the healthcare sector, there's a push towards personalized medicine, which is really looking at a patient's genetic makeup and tailoring their medicines specifically for their treatment. If we look at an example such as the Human Genome Project, that was a huge feat for biologists. We basically sequenced the entire genome, and we were left with all of this data, but what were we going to do with it? Looking at things that we can do, Google's Deep Variant has applied AI to build a picture of a patient's genome from their DNA. And what we can do with that is find different areas within the genetic code that are druggable. And this offers new targets for large pharma, which is constantly looking to revamp the drug development pipeline. As we collect individual patient data in a move towards personalized medicine, we lack tools to extract usable info from that data. AI is really in its infancy within pharma, but we expect that this is going to ramp up very soon. We're finally in this era of precision medicine. We have targeted therapies, tailored medicines, and this is all going to drive AI adoption out of pure necessity. The pharma industry is facing a patent cliff. They have been for the past five years. They are constantly looking for ways to cut costs and speed clinical development, and AI has many applications that can help the sector. So why is drug development so behind? Let's look at a few figures just to paint the picture for you. Pharma spends $2.7 billion for each drug that makes it to market. And what that accounts for is that 90% of drugs fail in clinical trials. Up to 29% of a given study's total cost is still being attributed to the clinical trial enrollment process. And AI has plenty of applications there, as we'll discuss in a minute. In the US, around 2 million patients are involved in 3,000 clinical trials. That's 6 million patients that are needed for clinical studies. So nearly 90% of trials end up being delayed or over budget. AI can mine medical records and find patients and the right patients more quickly for clinical trials. So looking at a survey that was done by a contract research organization called ICON that works with large pharma, they looked at which of the following disruptive technology trends will have the greatest impact on trial operations. And so as you can see, most people recognize the power of AI, but it's not the top answer. So in this survey, people were allowed to select three. Clearly big data, data from wearables and connected electronic health records will drive the need for adoption of AI, which is going to make the vast amounts of information that we're collecting more usable. So if we look at the stages within the drug development process where AI is being adopted, it's really all early stage. So sort of in the identification process of drug targets like we discussed in the genome, and looking at ways to improve different molecular reactions. So just a few examples of AI at work that I thought could help elucidate this for you. If we look at ALS, it's a devastating neurological disorder that I'm sure you're all familiar with, Lou Gehrig's disease. It has limited options for therapy. AI can work as a tireless and unbiased researcher by analyzing chemical, biological, and medical data to find new targets. Perfect example of this, we have a company called Benevolent AI. And what they've done is they've identified a new possible therapeutic for ALS. And so far, it's shown promise, and it's now in clinical testing. And we've seen that it looks like the drug can prevent the death of motor neuron cells, and it's actually delaying the disease. And also, last December, the Barrow Neurological Institute found five new genes that are linked to ALS, and that was with the help of IBM Watson Supercomputer. And that is leading to potentially more drug targets for a disease that has never had a treatment. We also see partnerships between large pharma and AI-driven companies like Excientia, 
They're working with Sanofi in drug development to not only treat the disease, but the comorbidities associated with that disease in one molecule. So if we look at something like diabetes, these patients have weight issues, they have liver problems, cardiovascular issues. So they're really trying to simplify the treatment process. Scientists are just really not familiar with AI in the clinical trial setting, and they've only applied it early stage in terms of the target identification. Clinical trial optimization remains untapped. We expect significant growth in the next few years. And one of the main drivers of that is going to be the FDA. So the regulatory body for the US is behind the effort. They have a newly formed digital health unit, and it reports directly to the Center for Drug Research. We think this is going to be a major driver of adoption for AI in the clinical trial process. So how can AI help with this archaic clinical trial process that we have? First, as we discussed, you can recruit eligible patients into trials. Right now, the enrollment process is based on location, and only about 3% of eligible patients have the option to join a trial. If we had just 6%, we could cut the recruitment timeline in half. And really thinking about this, any delay in the clinical trial process adds to the cost of the study. And it eats into the opportunity cost. You lose about $600,000 per day in revenue for any kind of niche product and development, and up to $8 million per day for a blockbuster medical product. Trial recruitment processes can be improved by different platforms that we see from Facebook, for example, which can match user demographics and interests with participants to expand the pool. Google AdWords can also combine search words with user intent to identify when a patient is seeking treatment and is just about ready to enter a trial. It can also improve diagnosis. So if we look at an example like Alzheimer's disease, which is a disease that has no treatments, everything has failed in the pipeline, and one of the reasons is that we feel like we've identified patients too late in the process. So we can use AI to detect patterns in person speech. So for example, an AI patient, as they have cognitive decline, they will actually replace proper nouns with pronouns, and they'll hesitate a little bit more in between words. So we can identify these patients earlier, get them into trials, and hopefully use the therapy before it's too late. We can also use similar speech recognition patterns in depression, where a patient's vocabulary can be monitored for positive and negative words. In rare diseases, this is a very big focus of pharma right now. So rare diseases is something that affects fewer than 200,000 patients per year. And one of the biggest hurdles is getting patients into clinical trials. If you have a rare disease and there's no treatment, people often don't even know how to detect it. So there's a, uh, a very cool example of AI at work in a GPI anchor deficiency. Don't worry about that. But basically, AI has detected that in a person's facial patterns, you can actually detect that they have this deficiency. So just running an AI algorithm can help you identify patients, enroll that trial more quickly, and FDA is on board with this, and you can enroll just, say, 40 patients in your study and quickly speed up development. It can also help in modeling and statistical approaches to dose finding. AI can help with the number of adverse event reports that come to the FDA. So the FDA, on average, gets 12,000 adverse event reports per reviewer. AI can help with side effects across multiple trials and populations and flag and document these for humans to review. It can also assist with remote controlled studies that can speed enrollment and allow patients who aren't necessarily near a clinical trial setting to go on to therapy. And we can monitor patients in a real world setting far better than we can in a clinical trial. So things like a wearable, for example, that you can track a COPD patient and how the drug is improving their ability to walk around. That's very difficult to do in a controlled setting. Let's just look at one example, non-adherence. So AI can greatly improve compliance rate. In clinical studies, about 40% of patients become non-adherent after just 150 days in a trial. That leads to side effects and data variability and delays. We question, was the drug ineffective or did people just not comply with their therapy? AI is advanced to the point where it's capable of acting as a digital companion for patients to guide them through the clinical trial. You can send patient reminders, have them answer questions, and study procedure guidance can all be automated with AI. 
There's one company called AI Cure. They have a visual confirmation of medication ingestion that you simply use on a patient's smartphone to ensure that they're taking their therapy. And all of the objective data that we collect from devices and sensors in real time as individuals go about their normal lives can capture more meaningful and clinically relevant insights that can be used to design trials. So some challenges do remain. We are definitely at the infancy of AI adoption within pharma. Google updates its search algorithm 550 times per year, but life-saving devices like ICDs are still programmed with very simple thresholds. So clearly, we have a long way to go. But notwithstanding the issues like the labeling problem, the deployment issue, fear of regulation, and any consequences of failure, the industry is ripe for change, and AI is slowly being adopted. We think that the push towards personalized medicine genetic testing, and the support by the FDA will all help to support the large pharma sector, which needs a process like AI to help improve the clinical trial process and help speed drug development. Thank you very much. <laughs>